back. Today we do a little bit of tube testing again. We found a bargain on eBay, hopefully. Uh, it's a Ford CX-1500B, which looks pretty new. Uh, date code is some hard to read, I'll check it later. Uh, it has no shorts, it doesn't rattle. Again, it looks very clean, so I think there was not a lot of air going through the anode. Um, unknown condition bought from a source which doesn't really know what it is. So we'll see. What we do is we check that low voltage. First, we're going to heat it a little bit, and then we apply some. Uh, anode voltage and uh, just check for the current. Low voltage is fine, you only would need probably about 20 30 volts or so. What we do is hopefully that's fairly visible. This is our setup here. So we connect grid, screen, and anode together, and obviously the heater goes into the heater. 6 volts, 10 amps is the rated heater current and voltage and then we apply positive here and negative here so that goes to the, uh, the that goes to the cathode and plus goes to the screen grid and anode arrangement here which we have here that's a uh, grid screen and anode obviously heater is here it's not ideal but the, the clamps got a good contact so should be okay what we do we run the power supply up in, in current current limiting mode and try not to exceed the 10 amps so just crank the I'm limited on 6 volts and what I'm at the, at the moment I'm just cranking up the current and we can see now we got our rated 10 amps and we can see the voltage is creeping up slowly I've done that before just to make sure everything is fine and now you can see the current is decreasing because we are got our 6 volts nominal and I think it was about 9.5 or something like that so the heater looks within spec that's good So 6 volt 9.3 amps looks okay to me could be a little bit more but that may be the long cable work here from the power supply everything is nice and warm now so now we go to our anode supply hopefully that's fairly visible so now we are in 4 amps the tube can do 900 milliamps I think that's the rated current so we crank up the voltage slowly and uh, just put that to half an amp for now and we're ending up with about 20 22 volts half an amp 22 volts that looks, sounds good to me not too bad uh, oops, uh, yeah half an amp 22 volts so that's good let's put that down a little bit just double check the data sheet and uh, See what the rated plate current is. We got a data sheet and it says maximum plate voltage 3 kilovolts and uh, 0.9 amps plate current maximum. With these tubes you're going to be very careful because the screen and especially the grid dissipation is very low on this. Um, that's another check we need to do. Just make sure the grid is working. Um, applying some negative voltage to the grid just to make sure it's not doing anything weird so yeah 0.9 amps that's what we're going to drive now and see what the voltage is and that gives us an identification how good or how bad the tube is so the tube is nice and warm uh, we just cranked that up to about 900 milliamps make that 8 just, a, just under 900 milliamps and that gives us just under 30 volts, that's 28 volts and I think that's not too bad for that 
tube. Uh, certainly a usable one, and I think it can drive even more. Uh, I can easily go well beyond one amp, so that tube is actually good. Uh, I'm surprised. Just to crank it down a little bit. Um, because we don't have any cooling running at the moment, so we leave that cooking for a while just to make sure we're not cooking anything because we have no airflow these tubes they need airflow plate dissipation is 1.5 kilowatts so um, that's quite a substantial tube and I have a strong feeling this thing is probably unused if the grid is fine I'm, I'm gonna apply some negative grid voltage to see if it cuts off if it does um, I think we're good. Let's hook up some negative grid supply and uh, see what it does. Well, this looks very promising. Got 70 volts anode supply, and we got minus 20 on the grid, and we're driving. That's a 400 milliamp range. We're driving absolutely no anode current, so this is good. This means it cuts off nicely. I'm just lowering the the grid voltage. No, no, Kicks in a little bit. No. That's what we're doing here. I'm not driving any grid current. It's the power supply which mocks up a little bit. So here we go. We can see the as soon as the voltage comes down, that's exactly what it should do. <coughs> okay. Very happy with that. So we on full 70 volts and 25 volts grid and that's the reason why I need a lot of power supplies on hand just to do these sort of things so it's cooking nicely current went down to about 8.9 so I would call this tube a good one at least on the low voltage test this thing is fine to me so we're back with the grid on the anode we're driving 900 milliamps and we're getting, make that 27 volts. It's getting better over time, I think. So, that's all good. Let's unhook it and check out the date code. Looking a bit closer, this reads 0404. So I think this is produced in 2004. Um, it's an original iMac. 4CX1500B and uh, it has been in, in a socket you can see some marks here but there is absolutely no marks on the anode I have no idea I don't know exactly the history but I think it was a spare for a some sort of ISM high frequency generator um, so it may may have not been used quite possible so I think I'm a happy bunny today because I made a bargain this was very cheap we'll see what we built with that thing certainly we keep it we have another one that's a 3CX 3000 I had that for a long long time and it's got a dent and it rattles and it's it's got a short to everything so that's scrap, certainly. I think it came from a, from an industrial generator as well, uh, but apparently that's that's a door stopper. I knew can't use it for anything. I think that's it from the four six fifteen hundred. The picture again. It's grid screen anode all together. Positive here and ground to the cathode and obviously the heater 
the reason why I'm repeating that is because one of my viewers recently asked how are you gonna hook these things up for testing um, you can do that with pretty much any tube just to see if it does something it doesn't really tell you the the behavior at high voltage but it gives an indication is it okay or, or not what you obviously check is shorts between all the electrodes so that's uh, cut to grid and grid to screen and screen to anode and vice versa just check if there are any shorts if there are no shorts heat it up for a while and then gently apply some pseudo anode voltage and if you can get up to the rated current which is 900 milliamps in our case you can assume the tube is okay so you can stick it to a transmitter or whatever and try it out I don't have anything where it will fit but uh, anyway still pretty warm it's got a little ding here but again it's so clean I think it's not been used anyway that's it from the tube today thanks for watching thanks for subscribing until next time.